on the 25th of March 1948, a Chinese Qing Dynasty princess was led out to her execution, where many people looked on. She was accused of being a spy for the enemies of the Chinese, and for this she was declared a traitor, and then an executioner came up behind her with a pistol, and quickly the princess was executed. Yoshiko Kawashima was accused of spying, and she has been compared with Matahari and other female spies. During the Second World War, female spies were not spared anything, as many were condemned in some of the most shocking and brutal executions and ways. Some female spies who worked for British Special Operations Executive with the French Resistance would be captured, and they would then be taken into a concentration camp before that evening they were burned alive inside of the crematoria ovens. The Germans especially dealt with spies ruthlessly, as did the Americans who would even send teenagers to the firing squads after they were captured. But what is the story of the horrific execution of the Chinese princess shot for spying? As always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Yoshiko Kawashima was born into what was a dying empire and dynasty. She was born as in Gyoro Zhang Yu around 1907 and was one of 38 children born to Prince Shanqi, a Manchu prince who was related to the Qing dynasty. The Qing dynasty had come to power during the 1600s and they were seen as nomadic warriors who conquered much lands and they overthrew the Ming dynasty. For 200 years the Manchurian rulers reigned over China but by the time Yoshiko Kawashima was born their power was dwindling they did not have much influence. A revolution occurred in 1911 which overthrew the dynasty and then established the Republic of China. At this time Yoshiko was around four years old but she was then later sent to live with a Japanese friend of her father's. Because she was adopted by this Japanese man who was an adventurer and also a spy, she then adopted the Japanese name of Yoshiko Kawashima, taking the name of the man who did adopt her. She was educated in the family home, then as a teenager she was sent to school in Tokyo. In this school she learned many skills including judo and fencing, which would later prepare her for living during a time of conflict. Her biological father died in 1922, and her mother would then follow the Manchu tradition, and she would take her own life following the death of Yoshiko's father. But when she was a teenager, her adoptive father would abuse her, and it was said that Yoshiko had decided to cease being a woman forever, caused by the abuse she may have suffered. She would dress in a kimono one last time on the 22nd of November 1925, and she had a photo shoot showing her with traditional hair, and then with this she was bidding goodbye to life as a woman. That evening following this, Yoshiko then went to a barber shop and had her hair cut short, and then from this point onwards she wore men's clothes. This transformation was publicised in local media, and the headline read, Kawashima Yoshiko's beautiful black hair completely cut off because of unfounded rumours makes firm decision to become a man, touching secret tale of her shooting herself. This headline made reference to an incident which happened before, where she had shot herself in the chest with a pistol that had been lent to her. But Yoshiko would state in an interview days later that, I was born with what the doctors call a tendency towards a third sex, and I cannot pursue an ordinary woman's goals in life. Since I was young I've been dying to do things that boys do. My impossible dream is to work hard like a man for China, for Asia. She was known for being a tomboy in her early life, but when she was 20 her brother and adoptive father then arranged for her to get married. They negotiated with the son of an Inner Mongolian army general, and this marriage lasted three years before Yoshiko left her husband, and she then began to travel around China, and then she went on to Japan, where she had a number of rich lovers. Kawashima then moved to Shanghai, and while she was there, she was introduced to a Japanese military intelligence officer named Raikishi Tanaka, who then recruited her to become part of his spy network. When Tanaka went back to Japan, Yoshiko continued to serve as a spy for the general Kenji Dahara, who would later be instrumental in the pre-Second World War battles between the Japanese and the Chinese. Yoshiko often went undercover during missions in Manchuria, and she was said to have been strikingly attractive with a dominating personality, almost a film drama figure, half tomboy, half heroine, and with a passion for dressing up as a male. She possibly did this in order to impress the men, or she may have done it in order to be more easily fit in into a tightly knit guerrilla groups without attracting much attention. But she would have friends in high places, 
and she became friendly with the last emperor of the Qing dynasty, who allowed her to stay in his household. But when this man became the emperor of Manchuko, Yoshiko continued to spy, and she became the mistress of the emperor's chief military advisor, and she would then learn a lot of secrets. But she then became part of a cavalry force, who she led in 1932, made up of thousands of bandits, who would hunt down anti-Japanese guerrilla fighters, and the Japanese saw her as a figure comparable with Joan of Arc. But in Manchuko, she became very well known, and there were times where she appeared on radio and was interviewed. She said in one speech that, As commander I have ventured out into the hail of gunfire a number of times, and indeed I have sustained three bullet wounds. But when I think of it, I see that, friend or foe, we are all brothers. But she was a spy at the end of the day, and as the Second Sino-Japanese War erupted, Yoshiko seemed to fade into the background of the conflict. The Japanese military began to become tired of her, and she was too popular and too much of a celebrity to be of use as a spy, and she had very strong opinions. But Yoshiko would then become addicted to morphine and opium, and she suffered from syphilis. She would run a blackmailing group who extorted money from Chinese wealthy people, but she was then arrested. But in 1941, as the Second World War waged on, she was lonely and disillusioned. As the Chinese fought back, her money seemed to disappear, and in 1945, when the Soviets invaded Manchukuo, they put an end to the Japanese regime. The day after Chinese forces recaptured Beijing, Yoshiko Kawashima was arrested, and she was then charged with treason. She was classed as a traitor, and the judges used much of her interviews and newspaper articles against her, and Yoshiko claimed that false gossip would condemn her to death. The Chinese were outraged by the brutality of the Japanese, and they wanted vengeance for those who had been slaughtered, millions of prisoners of war, and Yoshiko was seen as a horrific turncoat. She was sentenced to death and would try to appeal this, but these appeals were rejected, and because of this she was imprisoned for some time, before her execution would be carried out. On the 25th of March 1948 in Beijing, Yoshiko Kawashima was brought out to a firing range, and there were many people who had come to witness the execution of the woman, regarded as the Joan of Arc of Manchuko. She was led out by an executioner, who then told her to kneel, and he pulled out his pistol, then aimed it at the back of her head. It was in the courtyard of a cold prison, and then in the back of the head the executioner fired one shot, and Yoshiko Kawashima was instantly killed. Following her death, her remains were placed on public display, before her body was collected for cremation by a Japanese monk. The life of Yoshiko Kawashima was one which was filled with scandal, shock and spying. She was a woman regarded by the Chinese as one of the most terrible war criminals, and she had spied for an army who slaughtered millions of innocent people, and who committed shocking attacks on cities such as Nanking. The information Kawashima learned was passed on to the Japanese, and she was regarded as the Eastern Matahari. But this princess in the courtyard of her prison was executed by a single gunshot. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.